This is Freiburg im Breisgau, a city in the Black Forest. It's often referred to as Germany's Green City. It's a city with more than twice as many bicycles as cars and over 400 kilometers of bicycle lanes. It's a city with a lot of trams and amazing pedestrianized streets. Over the past few decades, Freiburg has become a leader in modern sustainable urban development and they're building an absolutely amazing city in the process. Germany is well known for its car industry and autobahns, but Freiburg is different. This is a city where cars do not rule. Freiburg is a university town and around 10% of the population attends the university. So obviously you see a lot of students cycling to and from school and a lot of bicycles parked outside the university. But you also see a lot of cargo bikes and families, a key indicator that Freiburg has a very advanced bicycle culture. The old town in the center of Freiburg is a wonderful place to be. There's old architecture alongside the new, and the streets are beautiful too. Isn't this amazing? I even managed to film two trams going through here at once. Appreciate my patience and good timing. Everywhere you look, there are trams, people cycling, and lots of people of all ages out enjoying themselves. There are nice, narrow streets and lots of outdoor patios. The city center is almost entirely pedestrianized, so of course, it's very quiet. Yet another reminder that cities aren't loud, cars are loud. And when you do see the occasional car, it looks comically out of place with so many people around. The city center has these open water channels, and it's said if you fall in one, you're destined to marry someone from Freiburg. But the best part is that kids actually make boats to sail on the water. Isn't this just one of the most wholesome things you've ever seen? This is so much fun. I was lucky enough to meet up with Ashton from the YouTube channel Type Ashton while I was in town. She and her family are from the US, but they loved Freiburg so much that they decided to stay in Germany permanently. Ashton has great videos on her channel about everything from macroeconomics to microurbanism, and she talks a lot about the differences between the US and Germany. I'll leave a link to her channel below. And of course, she's also an expert in Freiburg, which was great for my first trip here to this amazing city. Seriously, the Freiburg Old Town is one of the nicest places I've ever been to. So you might be thinking, okay, 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 this is an old medieval city, but actually it's not what you might think. Sure, Freiburg was originally founded in the year 1120, but most of Freiburg was leveled in World War II, which was the case for many cities in Europe, of course. But what was truly unique about Freiburg is that when they rebuilt it, they made it similar to what it used to be instead of being rebuilt for cars. So remarkably, pretty much everything you see here is less than 75 years old. Unfortunately, the rest of the city was not so lucky. It's commonly said in Freiburg that the war destroyed 80% of the city and cars destroyed the other 20%. Outside of the city center, neighborhoods were built with that car-centric vision of modernity that was common across the world in the 1960s. This road, just outside of the city center, used to be a narrow street, just like the rest, with several popular beer gardens and restaurants. But they were all destroyed to build the ring road. The 1960s really were the decade of destroy stuff to build roads, and we're still paying for those decisions today. It was only very recently that activists were finally successful in getting a car lane removed to build a, this totally insufficient bicycle lane. This area will likely never return to its original beauty and it's entirely because of car infrastructure. Ironically, the center of Freiburg, though rebuilt in the style of the original city, was completely overrun by cars and asphalt. Look at this difference between this footage from 1973 and how it looks today. This pedestrian square used to be a parking lot. Now parking for the city center is in garages on the periphery. There were several key decisions that put Freiburg on the right path and avoided the destruction that comes from making a place car friendly. In 1972, the city voted to keep its tram network. This had a massive impact on the Freiburg we see today. 
There's one consistent thing I've seen in cities all over the world. Every city that retained its tram network has better urbanism than any nearby city that didn't. But Freiburg went a step further and actually expanded its tram network through the 80s and 90s while other European cities were removing theirs. The first part of the city center was pedestrianized in 1973, and once the cars were removed, the city center became a successful business district with a popular market that is still active today. The market surrounds this beautiful cathedral, and it's one of the genuine highlights of the city center. And of course, this used to be a parking lot too. In the 1970s, there was a growing environmental movement that protested any developments that would destroy the neighboring Black Forest. This kept the city more compact than most cities that were built or rebuilt for the automobile after the war. In 2002, Freiburg elected the first Green Party mayor in Germany, and since then Freiburg has become the model for sustainable city development in Europe. One great example of this is Vauban, a suburb completed in the early 2000s that was designed to be environmentally friendly from the start. The buildings here were built to a very high energy efficiency standard, and you see solar panels on roofs and balconies all over the neighborhood. Some of these buildings even generate more energy than they consume. The neighborhood was built on the location of a former military base, and some of the apartments were built from the original barracks. One really unique element is that many of these apartment buildings are collectively owned. A group of people would come together and build an apartment building themselves instead of buying units from a developer. Today, the majority of residents in Fauban live in housing cooperatives or social housing developments. When Fauban was first built, only about half of households owned a car, but remarkably, that number has actually decreased, especially after the tram line was completed in 2006. Today, the vast majority of households in Fauban do not have a car, and there are only about 170 motor vehicles per thousand inhabitants. I wonder if these old clunkers count towards that number. You don't have to walk around very long to realize that a lot of people get around here by cycling. Even though this is a suburb on the edge of the city. The neighborhood makes extensive use of modal filters, allowing people walking or cycling to pass through while being off limits to cars. This is exactly the same method that the Netherlands uses to discourage car traffic, especially through traffic in residential neighborhoods. This makes the streets of Fauban very safe for children, and you see lots of kids out on their own. And some of the streets here are designated as play streets. This neighborhood has one of the highest percentage of children in all of Germany, which isn't that surprising because places without cars are better for kids. Fauban is also very well served by transit. On the west side is a transit station with tram and bus stops connecting residents to other parts of the city. But the tram line also runs along the whole side of the neighborhood, making it easily accessible to everyone who lives here. This should be the model used to design new suburbs everywhere. Unfortunately, not all neighborhoods in Freiburg are as well designed as Fauban. So you'll see other districts with streets lined with parked cars. And it always annoys me when cars are supposed to be parked on the sidewalk. Because while Freiburg spent only a few decades building car-centric infrastructure, those places still remain, as it takes many decades to repair that kind of damage. But you can see some of those repairs taking place, with extra space being given back to people who walk and cycle. There is, of course, a lot of bicycle infrastructure in Freiburg, including many curb-protected bicycle paths. Unfortunately, even major intersections are totally unprotected, designed in the Copenhagen style as opposed to using much safer Dutch designs. And there are still many painted bicycle gutters and dangerous merge lanes on busy roads. So clearly there are still opportunities for improvement. But many of the streets in Freiburg have so little car traffic that dedicated bicycle infrastructure is not required and some of these have been designated as bicycle streets, where people cycling can use the whole street and drivers need to yield to bikes. 
and it's always great to see parking spaces converted to outdoor seating for local restaurants. Now, there's a lot that's been written about the cycling infrastructure in Freiburg, but I actually think the tram network is one of the city's best features. Freiburg refers to its tram system as a Stadtbahn instead of a Straßenbahn, the usual German word for tram. This is because they consider it to be better, with separated tracks, traffic light priority, and a higher average speed than most tram systems. The trams in Freiburg are very modern, with level boarding at tram stops, making the system very accessible, though there are still some older trams that have yet to be replaced. The tram network covers most of the city and even goes out to several suburbs. And the current planning rules state that new housing cannot be built unless it's within walking distance of a tram line. I didn't even cycle while I was in Freiburg because if I have a choice between cycling and taking a tram, I will take a tram. I was able to get everywhere I wanted to go and I never had to wait very long for a tram either. Because the trams have a signal priority and a dedicated lane for most of their routes, getting around by tram is extremely quick and efficient. And there are so many grassy tram tracks here. I love grassy tram tracks. Also, I like the new tram and bus station at Europa Platz, with chargers for the electric buses. And the roof of this station is covered in solar panels. In fact, the entire tram network, as well as all of these electric buses, are run off of renewable energy because, <laughs> of course they are. Freiburg is not a sprawling city, so it's very easy to get out into the Black Forest. We heard there was a great view from a cable car nearby, so we set off to visit. We took tram two out to the end of the line in the south, where we picked up a bus. We had to walk all the way from the tram right here. This is so great. I know this is just a silly, trivial trip to a tourist attraction, and this trip doesn't really matter at all, but this is the way public transit should be everywhere. Not just for the center of the city, not just for commuting, but for all kinds of trips that someone might want to take. Now, the weather wasn't the best, but the view from the gondola was nice, and when we got back, the tram was waiting for us. Freiburg's train station is centrally located, though not very pretty. We got here by train, by the way. And while the road directly outside of the station is not as nice as it should be, there is a separate area above the station where you can board a tram and go into the old town without interacting with any cars at all. Or you can pick up a bike share bike to continue your journey into the city. And there are clearly a lot of people who cycle here. And if you need to access the other side of the city, this walking and cycling bridge will take you over the train tracks, which also used to be a car bridge until 1996, because of course it was. I prefer it like this. And now it leads directly to this bicycle parking garage for the train station. Freiburg is a highly desirable city that is sustainable both environmentally and financially and with great public transport. It's a beautiful place that's safe for children, accessible to all kinds of people, and enjoyable to be in. And yet, it's not thousands of years old. Every one of us probably knows someone who is older than the Freiburg city center, which really does make you wonder, why can't we build more places like this? It's not like it's lost knowledge. We know how to build like this, and we know people like being in places like this. This is what the sustainable city of the future should look like. Not a place with wide roads and self-driving cars, but a human-sized city with clean and efficient public transportation and streets that are safe enough for everyone. Over the past few years, Freiburg has become very well known by urban planners in Europe and many planners and politicians come here to learn about sustainable urban development, which is great because as far as I'm concerned, the more cities that copy Freiburg, the better. If you're a fan of car-free places, you might enjoy my video about Zermatt, a car-free town in the Swiss Alps. I'll put a link to that video down below, which you can watch now, but only on Nebula. Nebula is the subscription streaming service that was built by creators. It's not an ad-driven platform that has to answer to advertisers. It's a platform that's funded by people like you and managed by the creators themselves. 
On Nebula, you can watch all of my videos completely ad-free and sponsor-free, and every video I make is released on Nebula first before it gets posted to YouTube. Nebula is the best way to support this channel, as well as over 150 other Nebula creators, including city and transit channels like City Beautiful, City Nerd, and RM Transit. City Beautiful has a whole series of videos about the world's greatest cities that are only available on Nebula. With a Nebula subscription, you'll also get access to Nebula classes, online classes from your favorite creators. Legal Eagle will even teach you how to sue like a lawyer. If that sounds interesting to you, then you can sign up for 40% off the annual price by going to the link go.nebula.tv slash notjustbikes. That comes out to 30 bucks a year, not per month, per year. It's a pretty great deal. Thanks to Nebula for sponsoring this video. And thanks to all my supporters on Nebula and Patreon who pay me to ride trams in Germany. This channel wouldn't be possible without your support, so thank you.